Hi, my name is Anish Naizu. Uh, I am a junior student here at St. Cloud State University. I'm currently doing my computer engineering. Uh, today I would like to show you my final project I did for my microcontrol system design class uh, taught by Dr. Jane. First I would like to show you my hardware design over here in this breadboard. Uh, I have a microchip which is PIC 18 f 4455 uh, I have a 20 megahertz oxidated clock, a keypad, LCD display screen, and here a small potential meter to control the contrast on the LCD, a push button, a temperature sensor, a capacitor to measure the capacitance, uh, I'll show it later. Uh, this whole board is driven by 5 volt that we get from USB. This USB is connected to a computer. Uh, this USB also uh, supplies as a data transmission uh, between the computer and the PIC chip. This PIC chip uh, we load it by a bootloader which creates a virtual RS-232 COM port uh, in a computer so that we can download our software or even programs without any need of special hardware or software. Uh, now I would like to show you my GUI design over here. Um, I designed the GUI in Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. Uh, I use c -sharp programming language. Uh, let me run the program. Uh, the code for the PIC was written in C and I use CCS compiler for that. So before I go any further I need to commun uh, connect my PIC and my GUI. Uh, as I mentioned before the bootloader has set up a virtual COM port. Um, I need to connect to that COM here, this COM4, and need to set the bits per second, and I'll leave the rest as a default. So now the PIC and my GUI are now connected. Um, my GUI has a four main channels here. So channel one is for uh, room temperature measurement, channel two is for digital oscilloscope, channel three is for pulse width measurement, and channel four is for measuring the capacitance. So let me start uh, with the channel one. So as you can see on the bottom graph here, this is a plot of the real-time temperature that's the data has been sent by uh, temperature sensor on the breadboard. Let me display the data here. Uh, this is now 24 degrees Celsius, which is pretty close to current room temperature. Um, as you can see also in LCD, the temperature being displayed. It's the same data being displayed at both places. Uh, let me hold the temperature sensor, and as you can see on the graph here, the plot rises up. Uh, yeah, uh, I also have a um, LCD clear LCD button right here on my GUI, which will clear the LCD, and I also have a clear GUI button here, which also clears the GUI. Um, yeah, this is all about the channel one. Let's go to the channel two. Channel 2 is for the digital oscilloscope, which is the main part of this project. It uh, took like almost 70 to 80 percent of the whole time. Uh, first, I would like to show you the setup and setup in my function generator right here. Uh, I'm using a 5 volt pick to pick um, sinusoidal signal offset to 2.5 uh, volt and frequency for now, let's say 1 kilohertz, which has been supplied to here to my pick. So if I select the channel 2, as you can see the graph being plot on this first plot over here, which is the voltage plot, as I can move, I can increase or decrease the frequency. As you can see, the response is pretty quite fast. Uh, here's the sampling frequency. This is the frequency at which my pick is taking samples from the analog signal. And right now it's 66 kilohertz. So for a pick uh, that's, being, that's using a 20 kilo, uh, megahertz of an external clock, it's usually around 70 kilohertz is the maximum sampling frequency. So right now it's a 66. So um, if we take this as a sampling frequency and uh, by the Nyquist sampling frequency, I mean by the Nyquist sampling rate, I can go up to the 32, which is the half of sampling frequency. Uh, here I have a DFT plot as well. It's a discrete Fourier transform. You can see these two picks right now are at 
uh, around 13 kilohertz. You can also see the frequency right here, time period, peak to peak voltage. Let me increase it. So it, right now I'm in 33 kilohertz. So right after that, it comes back. So, so the maximum uh, frequency I can go is to up to 33, which is the half of the sampling frequency. So let me go back to one kilohertz. Uh, I do have certain other features right here, like a trigger. As you can see, the trigger bar in the graph. Right now, the graph starts from one volt, zero volts. This is 2.5. Let me lower the peak to peak voltage to around 3. So if I go to trigger bar out of the range, for example 5, as you can see the graph is unstable. If I move back to 2.5, the graph is now stable. So this is the whole purpose of this trigger. Let me move. Um, here's a voltage span, but um, scroll bar to increase or decrease the y-axis time span right here. Uh, so for, uh, let me increase the voltage to 5 volts back. Uh, it, in this DFT, I have two options the, for amplitude scale, which is a linear, which is currently being shown, and uh, dB scale which is being normalized to 0 uh, dB. So this is all about channel 2. Uh, now let's move on to channel 3, which is a pulse width measurement. Uh, for that, let me change my signal to pulse. I have set it up the duty, duty cycle to 75% right here. So that makes the pulse width, uh, positive pulse width to 750 microsecond and negative pulse width to 250 microseconds. So if I start my channel 3 here in my GUI, you can see the positive pulse width right here. I can select negative. And even I can change the um, frequency. You can see the changes. So that's about the uh, channel 3. Let's move on to channel 4. So the channel 4 is a capacitance measurement. Uh, right now I have a 1 microfarad capacitor right here. Uh, let me use a keypad for this. Star to select the channel. 7 to channel 4. So as you can see, uh, it's pretty close to 1 microfarad. This is within the 5% for sure. Uh, let me switch to another capacitance uh, capacitor, which is 0 0.1 microfarad. That's pretty close to 0 0.09. A smaller value again. This is a capacitor of 0 0.01 microfarad. Uh, that's pretty close. Uh, so in this system, um, we can use either keypad or uh, PC keyboard or the GUI buttons as I showed you before. Um, you can uh, use either of those interfaces uh, interchangeably or independently. It really doesn't matter. So yeah, this is pretty much all about my project right here. Um, this class was pretty interesting. I learned a lot. Even though I spent a lot of time, even days and nights in this class, but it was important thing was I learned a lot. So I would like to thank Dr. Zhang for this class and I would like to recommend other EC students to take this class. So yeah, thanks for watching this video and have a good day. Bye bye.